How would you like to radically improve your pasture fertility and the quantity and quality of what you're turning off without massively increasing your superphosphate bill? Sound interesting? Well, have a look at a new MLA-backed tool that helps you target your fertiliser applications where they're most needed. In fact, with phosphate prices rising and the day coming when demand will outstrip supply, phosphorus efficiency is looming as a crucial area of research for a long time to come. Tim Dawson explains. Well-fed sheep on well-fed pasture. That's what we're looking at here on this property in southern New South Wales. It's the result of 10 years close attention to the phosphorus levels in the soil. It's paid off for producer Chris Shannon. He's been able to almost double his stocking rate. We were running about five to six sheep to the hectare. Uh, prior to the drought, we had got it up to about nine to 10 DSEs to the hectare. Uh, and then since the drought we've had to ease off just a little bit just to keep our ground cover up. Um, but it's not only the DSEs per hectare, it's the quality of what we're turning off uh, in lamb and in wool. And considering he has over 3,000 hectares here at Talmo and two other leased properties nearby, running a dual purpose flock with 10,000 breeding merino ewes, that's a lot of extra return. Yes, we're definitely seeing the dollar signs, otherwise we wouldn't be doing it. Chris did make some capital applications of fertiliser in the early years to build up his pea levels. But what's remarkable is that nowadays he's not spending any more on super, and that's despite rising prices. The increase in cost has certainly uh, had an impact on the amount of super that we're putting out. So lately we've just been uh, putting the same amount of dollars out and just being a lot more targeted where we're putting it. He works out where it's needed by having his soil tested every year in various key locations around his property. Then he uses a new management booklet and software tool developed by CSIRO, Industry and Investment New South Wales. It was funded by Pastures Australia, a joint venture between MLA and other R&D corporations. It followed a long-term local grazing trial that Chris was part of. For the experts who put them together, using current thinking and technology, the five easy steps are exactly that. Know what your target level is, so we have a level in the soil where putting more pea on gives us no more advantage, we don't grow any more grass. The big advance there has been the phosphorus buffering index test, uh, so now we can work that out off a soil test, match your stocking rate to your phosphorus level. We're not putting the phosphorus on just so our places look good. That gives us a good feeling, but it doesn't make money. So we want to link the two together. Applying the appropriate fertilizer, and that's going to vary depending whether you're in a maintenance phase or whether you're wanting to increase stocking rates, so you've got to build it up. Economics, you could arrive at an, an agronomy decision about what you might do, but that doesn't mean it's going to make you money. It's going to depend on what's the profitability of the enterprises you're running. Point number five is think of other issues. It could be the type of pasture. We're going to set a slightly different target for native grasses than if we've got improved grasses. And the real advantage of this tool is that it looks at all the variables and helps you make a fertiliser decision that's appropriate for your farm business. It's just not looking at the pasture. It's just not looking at the stock. It's what's the pasture like, what's the stock like, what's the dollar return in the bank. It's the combination of those three which is the result. And for some people, for some people, um, the result might be out of using this book that they should stop fertilising and invest their money in fixing another problem. Yeah. For some people, it might be that they need to use slightly heavier rates or lower rates. But managing phosphorus levels is a much bigger issue for us than it is for many of our competitors around the world. That's due to our environment, according to the scientist who co-developed the five easy steps. Yeah, our soils are notoriously uh, low in phosphorus, very few exceptions to that. So Australia is very dependent on the use of phosphorus fertilisers to get high productivity in, in agriculture. The pea-hungry soils also mean that we have an inbuilt inefficiency in our system. The problem in Australia is that most of the phosphorus we apply to the soil gets locked up in the soil. In fact, for every four units that goes in, we only get one unit out as product. However, where we manage our phosphorus levels to really improve our efficiency, we need to look at not just what's going in, but better ways of getting it out. So we need to dig a bit deeper. Improving our farm usage using current methods is only the start. The longer term is to look for systems that rely on plants that can access soil phosphorus more effectively. 
And if we can do that, we should be able to reduce the amount that accumulates in our soils and effectively improve the efficiency of its use. And that's exactly what Richard Simpson, who's examined the root systems and pasture plants in another MLA-backed study, and other scientists and biologists around Australia are looking for. And MLA is currently reviewing the phosphorus-based research and its funding. There's no doubt it'll be a long-term project. We know that uh, there are a number of plants out there that, uh, that, that naturally ex access more phosphorus from soils. So from that we know in science that it's probably possible for us to improve the efficiency with which agricultural plants will get that phosphorus as well. And it's really a matter of putting in the hard yards in science research to see if we can crack that hard nut. And this is really a, a thing that will take a number of years. It's important that we recognise this it has a long lead time, that the payoff should be there immediately. If we were able to achieve it tomorrow, there would be an immediate payoff in terms of productivity and profitability. But the clock is ticking. Phosphorus supplies are running out and we can't make more of it. We can only recycle it. Uh, people talk about peak oil. Well, there's a, there's a suggestion that we may be approaching peak P, which means that globally demand will outstrip supply. And the, the worst predictions are only 25 years away, though probably that's a bit, a bit of a guesstimate. The fact is it's a finite resource and we have to look after that resource and use it very effectively. Whatever the time scale, the effect on super prices is fairly predictable. They'll keep going up. And that'll have a greater impact on Australian producers simply because we're more heavily reliant on phosphorus. With input prices increasing, it will challenge our competitiveness. Uh, because we have this liability, if you want to put it like that, of inherently poor quality soils. Clearly improving phosphorus efficiency will have direct benefits for Australian producers. And that's the yardstick that MLA uses when it considers investing in blue sky research. Rather than just doing work and hope it ends up somewhere, it's starting with the end in mind. What's the industry need? the deliverable the output. In this case, it's about improved phosphorus efficiency and then work backwards to consider what may be some of the strategic sites or areas that we should explore to address that producer need. For Chris and his father, it all means the days of dumping a hundred weight of super an acre every second year are long gone and never likely to return. Yeah, I'm third generation here at Talmo and uh, I've been here all my life and over that period we've uh, pasture improved the property as much as we can uh, using fertiliser but uh, in the more recent years with uh, agricultural science uh, things are changing dramatically in the way we use the fertiliser and yeah I've seen huge changes. And it looks like science may well deliver changes equally as impressive for the next few generations.